Hi, everyone. Number one Marmaduke fan here, using my uh, Douglas Ernst quiet voice because people are sleeping. So I was reading a book on design, and I came across something which reminded me of something I'm thinking about in comics Twitter, and that is Patrick Zercher becoming really upset at fans and blocking tons of people, including myself, mostly for, uh, as far as I saw, honest questions and innocuous comments and maybe politely poking fun at him for overreacting. And what prompted this was, uh, I think he discovered a older video by Diversity in Comics called The Dark Roast that was intended to be a sort of private way of making fun of people who had insulted him or who had insulted Diversity in Comics or slandered him as a member of the KKK. So Diversity in Comics makes this private video making fun of making fun of these comics professionals using you know coarse language, coarse, risque humor. And then eventually, uh, of course, someone threatened to leak it. And so Diversity in Comics published it as a way of sort of saying F you to the person who was threatening to leak it. You can go over to his channel for the details on that if you aren't caught up. But af after this video was revealed, th this was month, over a month ago, I think. But so just recently, Patrick Zercher suddenly commented about it. And he was, infuri he was in infuriated about it because one of the people mentioned in, in the dark roast was a coworker of his. He thought this was sexist, atrocious, beyond the pale, and started mass blocking anyone who followed or was related to diversity in comics in any capacity, any, anyone who asked uh, Patrick Searcher questions about uh, the Jawbreaker situation and essentially Jawbreaker's uh, being deplatformed, trying to prevent the book from being sold, asking the, him you know, questions about that and whether this is appropriate behavior. They all got blocked too as you know, sympathizers of the horrible, atrocious diversity in comics channel. So after I got blocked for asking pretty much what I said to him was that person you just blocked asked you a legitimate question. And then I got blocked, of course. So what I'm thinking about is, you know, this is another kind of sad moment. A few months ago, my first interaction with Patrick Searcher was when he was, when he was encouraging comics professionals to unblock people and to have kind of a more friendly atmosphere on Twitter. So, you know, okay, he's a liberal Democrat, probably way to my left. But yeah, let's, let's have some friendliness in our online interactions as we're talking about comics. And after I got blocked, then I started making fun of them and saying, remember that one time Patrick Zercher uh, had a Twitter poll and asked us to vote on which female character we, we'd like to see him draw naked. And he drew She-Hulk absolutely naked. Isn't that patriarchal? Isn't that sexist? And then I got to thinking about that because, you know, it's fun to joke about something like that. I'm sure a lot of the you know, contemporary left-wing people in either DC or Marvel comics, they've, they've surely drawn things that would be considered problematic through a feminist lens during the course of their life. And then I thought, well, why, why is this? So what I, what I come across while reading about uh, design from the AIGA in Chicago is a great illustration of this. This is something I knew, but it's just good to see little reminders of this. And it's an illustration of accepting cognitive dissonance. So what does this design book say about uh, Hugh Hefner and the design philosophy behind Playboy magazine? While Hugh Hefner's philosophy, girls, and a sage reading of the cultural winds made the Chicago-born Playboy magazine iconic, the visual style and sophistication often came from legendary illustrator and art director Art Paul, who created the tuxedoed rabbit logo that symbolized the good life. And that phrase stuck, stuck at, stood out to me. So it'd be one thing for you to say, you know, if you're like a woke feminist who is upset about the oppression of women, you could still appreciate the work of Art Paul as a, you know, significant designer and illustrator in, you know, American pop culture. But I, I, I'm 100% positive that everyone in the New York art scene, maybe 99.9% .9 of them vote Democrat. Uh, and the other, and of that 0.1%, the other half voted socialist and the other half, maybe they voted for, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's one, I, I'd be surprised if there's one Trump voter amongst the Chicago art establishment that, you know, puts out these books and, you know, does these sorts of discussions. It is a very left leaning, uh, artistic culture. So, uh, wh why is it that you can have this very basic feminist idea? This isn't the radical 
uh, re revolutionary feminists saying this. It's a very basic feminist idea that you contribute to patriarchy and you create oppression by objectifying women and that the capitalist consumerist culture does this. Well, okay, well, who does that if not Hugh Hefner and uh, Art Paul, the illustrator for Hugh Hefner? So how is it that you could have this philosophy of life? Whoops, there goes my scanner. How, could, how is it you could have this philosophy of life which says that by drawing uh, or taking photographs of women in sort of sexually objectified poses for the presumed male gaze and capitalizing on that, benefiting, benefiting financially based on the bodies of women, that you are a sexist, that you are, uh, that you are literally oppressing women. So it's not just like it's a sin. It's a sin that actually creates this you know, sexist system of culture, which, which reinforces itself. And what, what, what I kind of firmly came to the realization of is that people are okay with cognitive dissonance depending on who their team is. So why is it okay to praise Hugh Hefner even though what he, sh what he did during his life should be totally at odds with a feminist? Well, yeah, a mainstream feminist vision. Why is there this division between sort of anti-pornography feminists like Dworkins and feminists who are m more accepting of the, the sexualization of women in pop culture? They might argue that it's actually empowering for women to do that. Well, I think the reason for that is team politics that, you know, I don't think anyone looks at uh, Hugh Hefner's Playboy magazine and says, well, you know what that does? That that empowers women, that uh, th this is actually the opposite of male gaze. So the, the, I think the only way you can conclude that Hugh Hefner is a cool, awesome, uh, you know, brilliant part of our culture, that the rabbit logo represents the good life is for you to ha have sort of a team politics mentality. So Hugh Hefner may not be very good from the perspective of male gaze theory, but he's good from the perspective of uh, p participating in the sexual liber liberation of the culture, of resisting sort of the Christian sexual mores of the 40s and 50s. And if you have that team politics mentality, well, then who cares if male gaze theory is a very basic idea in feminist literature, and you're ostensibly a feminist or pro-feminist. Pro you, you, someone may yell, yell at you about it on Twitter, but you're under, you think, you're, you're probably under no obligation to live a certain way. You can think whatever you want and do whatever you want. Uh, th there are Nazis to go fight. So I guess that's, that, that sums it up. So why is it that Patrick Zerker, Zercher can literally have ma male audiences, well, well, anyone on Twitter, but presumably the male audience vote on which female superhero he's going to draw in the nude to pander to the male gaze because because he's okay with cognitive dissonance. It doesn't matter to him if that is a complete uh, contradiction of the very social justice principles he then went on to espouse afterwards. So after I was blocked, then I saw him, people retweeting him or screenshotting him saying that comics have always been about college lefty politics. I can't believe these idiots. Well, the new college lefty politics aren't the same as the college lefty politics of the, the 60s and 70s gang. And I guess sort of the crippling, sad realization for me is that you can say it is inconsistent for you to pander to the male gaze in your comics and then signal to everyone what a feminist ally you are. These two things don't go together. But as long as people are okay with cognitive dissonance and as long as they have an enemy to hate, they just won't care. And that just won't get through. And Maybe, maybe it's possible for some people to be persuaded that if they were really consistent with their principles, they would not be drawing She-Hulk naked for their Twitter followers and making more money as artists. I think every artist knows that if you draw beautiful women, you personally profit more off of that than if you draw, I don't know, big fat female job of the huts or something uh, in, you know, sweater vests so you don't show too much skin. But if you're okay with cognitive dissonance, then you can do that all your life. You can have your entire life's work, your entire career, be making problematic work and not care that it's problematic from the very political perspective that you are espousing online. That's the point. I'm not going to belabor it. I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. Uh, if you like these pieces where I think about something or maybe put a twist on something we've been talking about, why don't you like, 
comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'm making progress on my comic, and it's going to be dank, and it's going to be dope. Love you guys, and I'll catch you later.